Lady Cassandra at the moment has been really annoyed, but it's not this eye that's the problem, it's the other eye that's the problem. They're seeing eye. You're seeing I can't... Okay. <laughs> You're seeing I can't see. My seeing eye is infected. Oh, God. Are you blind, effectively? Yes, effectively, yes. Oh, I'll, I'll, lead, you. I'll lead you to the pub quiz. Yeah, I, I, I have a sty in, in the good eye. Hence the reason I look like I got punched in the eye by Sophie. <laughs> okay, shall we get started on the podcast? Welcome to the As Yet Undecided podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Sophie. Now before we get started to the podcast proper, I do have quite a few corrections to make. But first, can I, can I throw you under the bus? Yes. Okay, because we don't understand the context. They don't understand the context, right? Right. Well, after we filmed the podcast last week, yes, we went to the pub quiz like we usually do on a Wednesday. Yes. And funny enough, one of the questions on the pub quiz was, what was Coldplay's first album called? No, no, no. no. Which, al- which album did, the, um, did that a particular song come from? Yes. Yellow. Yes. Was it yellow? Yes. And we thought it was hilarious because prior we were in the podcast here talking about Coldplay. And secondly, this is second and lastly, I want to throw you under the bus a little bit. Mm -hmm. When, 24 hours after the podcast was released on SoundCloud, you told me how many subscribers we had. And how many of them were bots? Yes. Or computers, as you outrightly put it. And I said to you, oh, I, I, I wish they become really big fans, like those 52mm ones that rotate. And we had a bit of a chuckle about that. Yes. They were cool. <laughs> ah! Oh. um Yes. Oh, on to your corrections. Okay, so last week I said that you cannot fly a helicopter up Mount Everest, except in 2005, a guy did that. <laughs> Funny, but the thing was, no one else was stupid nor brave enough to repeat that stunt, so let's just say that under, normal, under most circumstances, it is nigh impossible. So if, if you want to be a hipster that flies up Mount Everest then t- then with a helicopter, please have, please Gain experience first. Secondly, the latest Coldplay album wasn't called Adventure of a Lifetime. That's one of the names of the songs. It was called A Head Full of Dreams. And the Beyonce and thirdly, the Beyonce song that I mentioned was called Hand for the Weekend. But, but anyway, enough of my corrections. How has your week been, Mike? No, oh, it's it's been okay. As as we were talking about before the podcast started, I I have two bung eyes. What my good seeing eye is infected, and I go for surgery for the ulcer in the other eye tomorrow morning. Well, good luck. Well, for things, I think I need it. Yeah. And how and how was your week? Oh, I'm um, good, but it was immensely busy. I went to a leadership conference, and the dress code was uh, was business casual, which added to the many challenges they presented. So, what's business casual anyway? Well, that's a good point because because there are such things as as casual Fridays, mm-hmm. and I would think that business casual would be correct pants, different top without the blazer. Okay, uh, when I was discussing that's the, this is an interesting thing. This is what you call startup business casual because, as it turns out. Uh, depending on the company you you have or go to, business casual means different things. And if you are working in a big corporation, fancy as, such as a law firm, it will be your your suit minus the tie. Huh. Just the tie? Your suit without the tie. That's basically it. Huh. Why would that be? Well, because if you work in a fancy as organisation, I, I suspect they still want you to be somewhat formal. But it's a tie is just a piece of clothing that basically isn't half strangling your neck. Well, that's why I called it the noose 
when I was back at St. Cuthbert's. <laughs> but, but, on, but, but honestly, it's just, uh, that's, that's why I cannot decide what business casual is these days because they can either range from shirt, shirt and trousers to a suit minus a tie. But actually, funny thing is, I saw someone wearing a t-shirt at my, con- at my conference. Yes, which probably, if I was invited to that conference, mm. I would have been wearing a t-shirt. But yes. in, but in saying that, what is business casual for a female? Now, before we get to that, um, I just said, like to add, it seems as if the uh, current normal business casual that, can us- that you, you can usually get away with is navy blazer, white shirt, white dress shirt, um, cool droids, cool droid trousers, okay. and brogues with, with black socks. Brogues? You know, Oxford, but with holes. Okay. There we go. Huh. Yeah. Um, brogues are basically Oxford shoes, but with um, toe decorations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ho, ho, ho. It's Christmas brogue. Oh, do you probably have mistletoe at the ends of your shoes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. And, um, okay, so this is the even more difficult part. Because, as you know, um, there's... A lot more clothes for women to choose from, but um, as it turns out, there's still some things that are big no-nos. Well, most people usually think that you know business casuals just mean smart, but for men, they can get away with it. Well, for women, it's a bit more difficult. So, for example, I'm currently wearing a sundress. Yes. Most people would consider that smart, but it's a big no-no for business casual. Why do people care so much about clothes? That's what I would love to know. I mean, why did Victorian women have to wear corsets? Oh, yeah, it's... Oh, I don't understand that. I uh, don't understand fashion. I don't understand clothes. I just... So long as the clothes look... So long as the clothes are comfortable and look relatively nice on you, who cares? Exactly. Comfortable, clean, nice. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. sincerely don't get fashion. Yeah, the, the, the only thing I only care about that is smart is, is the brain capacity. That's about it, really. Yeah, me too. To women's business casual, it apparently has to be two-piece, which is why sundresses don't work. The dress, the skirt part itself has to be over the, over the knees. Two-piece? Two-piece. Shirt or blouse plus a skirt. <gasps> okay, okay. Carry on. Thinking that the only other female dress that came in a two-piece was a bikini. So I would think it would be strange to go into a business meeting wearing a bikini. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a tr- so um, business casual for women, two-piece, shirt, a shirt slash blouse and a skirt. The skirt has to be over the knees. And then you have to have dress shoes, which means if, which means it has to have a little bit of a heel in it. A little bit of a heel? Can I have a microscopic heel? Yes. Okay. Like what I'm wearing. Yes. I cannot handle big heels. But, as appara- but as apparently the gold standard for heels is the stiletto. Oh, great. Yeah, have you a know. big... Or, 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 or as I like to call the woman stabbing weapon of choice. Well, stiletto, well, stiletto does mean knife in, in Italian. Well, it's a type of knife. and No, that's not a knife. This is a knife. No, seriously. <laughs> stiletto, a, traditional, a traditional stiletto is basically a thin piece of metal... Wrapped with a piece of wrapped over with a piece of um, fabric, which you can use, which means you can use it like a knife, and many women have, basically to stab the assailant's feet. Yes. So stiletto, so stiletto, the stiletto shoe means you're literally wearing knives on your heels, and there's such a danger that um, uh, straight after nine eleven, Milano Blancs were banned on U- U.S. planes. Yet women have to take their shoes off and put them in bags. TSA boggles my mind. Oh, yeah, no, right. I mean, on internal flights, I think they allowed small pocket knives on onboard flights, but still not, but they still not won't allow shampoo over bigger, bigger than 100 mils. So somehow liquid, somehow they still think liquids are more dangerous than knives. Okay. So it's a bit strange. Sp- speaking of other liquids that you can't take onto planes, mm-hmm. what's your take about brushing your teeth? Twice a day, has to be done, otherwise you're going to have rotten teeth. Okay, can can you talk about your oral oral, uh, oral hygiene? Horrible oral hygiene. (laughs) Horrible oral hygiene. (laughs) Lovely jubbly. Let's see. I brush after breakfast and I brush before bed. 
I don't do the three minute thing because uh, most I can manage to somehow compress the whole three minute sequence into one minute. I'm just okay. that fast. I still brush properly though, and I know that because um, every single time I go to the dentist, they always comment how lovely my pearly whites are. Oh my god! I know, right? Now, <laughs> do you use a battery power or are you manual? I'm completely manual. Why is that? I can't be bothered getting a, a battery powered one. My parents don't think I need one. Okay, I did go battery powered. Yes, what happened? Um, ran out of battery. Um, the thing with me is that I always had a stain on my on my front tooth as a kid. Ah, oh, yes. The huge brown stain, and it, it it got to the point where I had to put, I had to have veneers put in. Oh, really? So the paint is your teeth. Yes. So th- that's the reason why that my teeth are a permanent shade of light yellow yeah. to cover the stain. Yeah. Um, I will be bleaching sometime. Um, for, for me, I do I do the twice a day, and I be all OCD about it, and actually really want to get in there. Mm. So hence the reason I go through toothbrushes too goddamn fast. Because mm-hmm. because you feel like that the harder you scrub, the more likely that the stains are going to come off. But unlikely no, no, that no. is to be the truth. No, no, no. You, you just got to damage your gums that way. Yeah. So how hard do you like your toothbrushes? Um, I, I, I like a good solid medium. Oh, yes? Because soft is too soft and hard actually makes my gums bleed. <laughs> Toothpaste. Oh, Preferences. Yeah. Colgate mint. Let, let's, let's bring it back. Gel versus paste. I use a combination of both. Oh, so, you, so um, was it, back in, back in the old day, there used to be this thing called triple action. They still have it today. I still use it. <laughs> It's, it's such a successful branding for Colgate. It's just, still, they still have it. Or, or as I like to call it, America. <laughs> <laughs> Merdiga. <laughs> because of the red, white, and blue. Oh, my, my one is um, green, blue, and white. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> is, is, is that a high quality Latin American colour scheme there? Yeah, yeah, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> Did you buy. A, a normal toothbrush or do you'll be all fancy dancy with the with the tongue scrape and other things unfortunately these days no, no normal toothbrush does come with a tongue scraper you're going for the cheapest or the cheaper if you're going for something else okay yeah and, and, and what's your take on flossing once every two days once every two days yes have you used anything other than floss to floss your teeth no no I have I have seen um, a myriad of devices used. I've, I've someone used a toothpick, mm. someone used a piece of string, mm. and someone used the sleeve of a cigarette packet. Oh yeah, the the plastic that comes out of the cigarette packet. Wouldn't that make your gums bleed? Yes, because it's, you're basically putting a knife against your gums. Uh, Words of the wise. Ah, uh, that wasn't me. No, we are one of your uh, dumber associates from town. Yay, dumb associates or, from, or dumb acquaintances from from like from uh, Waikikimu Cow, right? Yeah, yeah, why why Kikimu Cow? Waikikimu Cow. Yes. Yes. What are your associates <laughs> from Waikikimu Cow? Yes. Oh God, why why Kikimu Cow? That that's an old name, like like Kai Kura. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> or or. Why can we? Mm. Have, you, have you heard of why can we? No. Or pie cocks are freaky. <laughs> 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 That's half an hour north of Wellington. Mm. Pie cocks are freaky. Mm. Yes. Or pie cockeriki. By the way, um, you know we have the in New Zealand we have the longest place name that is not you know deliberately made the longest name. Yes. Do you know what? Do you know how to say it? No. It is far too long <laughs> for for my mind to comprehend. But I have heard it being said multiple times. Yes, and um, usually I stick to about thirteen to fourteen letters. Yeah, like uh, on the Forgotten Highway mm. in the middle. There's a town called Fungamometer. Mm. If you don't know where Fungamometer is, it's 
on the road between Tiamuru mm-hmm. and Stratford, which is Stratford's about forty five minutes from where I grew up as a kid. And I that's where I got my hole in one, an actual golf, not mini golf or virtual golf. <laughs> that's where I actually got it. And and speaking of video games, where did you grow up before? Well, you did, by the way, Waikikamukau is a made up place name. Where did you grow up? I I, I grew up in Pui'i country. Oh no! So I I know. Do you, do you have the film poster? Yes, I do. Thank you for bringing it up. And who got me that poster? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I always like to say that it like I, I have been told to sing Poor Year 1,477 times mm. but I'm not keeping count <laughs> <laughs> if I had a dollar every single time someone told me that yes yeah. if I had a dollar every time I was told to sing Poor Year I would have 10 no 2 GTX 1080 Ti's <laughs> Which would be able to run most of the games on my Steam account. That would be sweet. <laughs> if only. And speaking of games and cheating, mm. what do you think about cheating? Cheating in general. Um, best, it's gener- it's morally abhorrent, and it should never be done unless everyone agrees to cheat. Unless cheating is part of the rules, don't cheat ever. Okay, uh, okay. Let, let's let's backtrack a bit because you're going straight into the multiplayer context of mm. it all. Yeah, multiplayer um, games and cheating is giant taboo. What about single player? That's the thing, though. Okay, is it morally acceptable to to cheat in a in a single player game in which you don't affect anything apart from yourself yes. and your characters? Yes. Because 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 we brought this up on the podcast last week about your Konami code. Yes. If there is a game that is very hard, like like Contra is, mm. and like Battle Toads are, and and you want to get to that successful ending, yes. By all means, cheat, but you need to. Admit to yourself and be truthful about your cheating, saying like, oh my god, I got 100% in this game, blah, blah, blah. But you didn't tell them that you were cheating. That would be dishonest. Yeah. Um, I personally try my hardest. Mm. Um, Like, take for example, the first game I clocked was Doom. Mm. I actually clocked it before I went into God Mode. Like, I would use God Mode... To look for the secret. Does that make Does that make sense? Yes. Um, it's it's generally accepted for old multiplayer games. Take for example all of the old Call of Duty games. Maybe not so much Halo. So why is that? How why is it more acceptable to cheat in older multiplayer games? Be- be- because it has been hacked. Oh. So everyone just assumes that um, everyone's cheating. So yeah. So when? So how long does it take for a game to get to that state? You, uh, usually about two years. Two years. Yeah, well, you you would get the odd cheater here or there after about six months. Okay. Because it'll be someone will hack hack the coding. Yeah. Um, hence the reason a, a lot of people try to be honest on the first couple of months. Okay, so with it, so you say about six months. Yeah. Okay, so that'll be interesting. That means I can that means I can cheat in the Watch Dogs, but not to Watch Dogs too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As as soon as you see people flying here, there, and everywhere, <laughs> <laughs> by all oh. means, by oh. all means, cheat. <laughs> oh, good, oh goodness! In the Watch Dogs context, that'll be very, very funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. And. There has been times in actual <laughs> gaming tournaments mm. where people have cheated. Yes. But in the rules, it was an acceptable form of cheating. Yes. So after they came up with the with the cheat in the tournament, they automatically made it illegal. How about so? How about mass multiplayer games? Say War, World of Warcraft. The, because um, 
World of Warcraft is definitely older than six months, but I'm pretty sure there'll be a lot of pissed off people if you decide to use the gold mode cheats. Now, with most MMO RPGs, it is it is different compared to the FPS shooters, right? B- 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 because they have a dedicated team. Uh, well, how about driving then? So, mass multiplayer. So. First person shooters. How about driving? Mel- online driving. Um, games. It's the, the, there is no pay to win mm. when it comes to those sort of games. Right. Like there isn't no um, bus simulator twenty sixteen tournament for for example. So ch- cheating um, does doesn't really exist because there is no added incentive. Right, so the less incentive there is to cheat, the more more acceptable it is to cheat. Yeah, you more well the, the less likely of people will care. I see that you're cheating. So if there's a high incentive every single time you win, the le- the le- morally less acceptable it is to cheat. It is about how much you can lose. Yeah. So that's why you have the six month thing because after six months, the luster of the game is lost. Yeah. But when it comes to mass multiplayer role playing games, because there are actual economies on there, you know, you can buy you can buy stuff stuff for actual money on um on on those types of games. Yes, and yes. and the term for that is microtransactions or gold farming. Yes. Oh yeah, the the gold farming story is hilarious. But I want to bring up this mm. the specific type of microtransaction. Right. Um, Halo Wars 2 is a RTS that has been released today, I think. And oh. and one of one of the modes is a blitz mode. Right. It's sort of like RTS and Hearthstone put into one, where you would play cards and blah, 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 blah. And one of the microtransactions costs $140. <laughs> That's not micro. <laughs> That's macro. That's microtransaction. <laughs> Yeah, so I thought that was hilarious. That is not micro. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is that is a full day of someone working in a in a high consumerist society. More in a well developed country. Yeah, you in mean. a well developed country. Yeah, okay. In a less developed country, how long would that take to get one hundred forty? You, is it US dollars? I it, 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 well, it, it, well, it is Australian. Australian, right? So, so it's one hundred and ten US. Mm. 140 Australian. Yes. So I would think it would be about three months. Three months of hard saving. Right. Yes. And definitely no cheating in that game, in that game because A, it's new, and B, people, people pay actual money for it, for stuff. Yes, and people in low, low socioeconomic areas wouldn't be able to afford Halo Wars 2 or let alone getting the hardware for it. <laughs> Right, but um, okay. So for so the higher the so for the higher the stakes for the other players, the less acceptable it is it is to cheat yes. in, in multiplayer games. How about single player games then? It is it is purely up to the individual. Okay. So be, because with with games that have both mm-hmm. an, an influencing multiplayer and a influencing single player. Mm-hmm. It is less emphasis on the single player and more emphasis on the multiplayer because the single player, you've already got it. Yes. And with multiplayer, you would have to buy more, like you would have to get more maps and all that sort of stuff. So um, having dedicated multiplayer games Mm. is what I see going forward for the gaming industry. If you see games like... Battlefield 1 has only got six hours of single player. Yeah. Um, oh, yes. They're, 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 it's huge in the multiplayer. Overwatch mm. is completely multiplayer. Mm. Um, if, you, if you've got games like Dota and League of Legends that are completely multiplayer other than the tutorials, which... Yeah, because, um, because you can get more microtransactions that way, which means you can get more money in the longer term. Yes, and, and take, for instance... Was it GTA Online made nine hundred million last year just in microtransactions? Is that is that do you think a reflection of the mobile market as well? Yes, it is mm. very much so. And there's going to be a point where 
mobile games will be taking over the gaming division in regards to revenue per year. That's that's very that's very interesting as well. Um, my, one of my favorite mobile games is called um, The Room, and they and it's a trilogy. Fireproof Games made a huge point about the fact they don't they don't use microtransactions whatsoever. It's, it, it seems as if um, Barry Mead, you know, one of the main guys, has this war against microtransactions. Yes, it, yeah. it's, it's a huge, expensive mobile game. I mean, it's seven New, New, New Zealand dollars if if you buy it new straight from um, when it just releases. But honestly, no microtransactions, no ads, just pure gaming. Oh goodness, it's such a good game. Yeah. It's worth the money, I think. Yes. But um, the but on but honestly, the, the the company seems to be you know they seem to make it they seem to make microtransactions a personal vendetta if you go follow their trust accounts. Yeah, because because it's all about yeah. a personal preference because mm. because Fireproof Games is a is a small player. Indie, yeah. So if you go to like Activision, yeah, where they actually have. Uh, AGMs and investor calls and stuff like that. They have people to please. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. So, like, like take for instance, if you take the Super Mario Run, game, mm. there was a lot of investors being angry because there wasn't microtransactions in that game. There's only a set um, dollar point of ten dollars to unlock the game, mm. but they wanted microtransactions for each world. Oh, nasty. I hate, but I hate microtransactions, though. Do you like microtransactions? Well, I usually try and stick to games that don't have microtransactions. So, if, so um, when do you think games will be so pissed off at microtransactions that the, that the games industry will be forced to change again? They're actively trying to be as ethically bound as possible. Mm-hmm. But it's coming more and more likely that the pay-to-win model is going to exist. Pay to win. Oh yes, in order to win, you need to have this rare as goodie, and you have to pay one hundred forty dollars for it. Yes, mm. that will make gaming impossible for um, people in some countries, and for university students, we're never going to win a single game ever again. And we have a numerous amount of other topics, and we would have to leave that till next week's episode. Oh yes, we shall. We must. <laughs> because we have to go now <laughs> <laughs> thank you for watching to the As Yet Undecided podcast mm. you can contact us via As Yet Undecided podcast at gmail.com or you can contact us personally I am the Manus T-H-E-M-A-R-N-U-S on most social media platforms likewise I am Sophie9709 on most platforms apart from Instagram yeah why is that because a lass named Sophie Coploma or something rather, a Russian lady named Sophie, managed to take it before me. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, thank you guys for watching, and um, see you next week. Oh, before we, well, before we leave, we forgot to say we are we are also AYU podcasts on most other platforms as well. So have so have a good day, people. <laughs> <laughs>